first of all build golden batch fingerprints. So I want to find out what are my best batches of history and build a fingerprint on top of that so, so I can compare later on. Um, but I also want to compare my current batch as it is going on, what is going to happen with it. Is it going to be close to uh, my desired behavior? So when I go to look at, uh, again, a typical batch example, um, the problem setting is that it's very difficult as the batch is going on uh, for the process engineer and for the operators to objectively assess, is this now a good batch or a bad one? Okay. So jumping into trend miner, first thing I want to do, of course, is I want to find out this, uh, this golden fingerprint. Um, so once again, a very typical uh, batch profile in the last eight hours. I have about six batches for this particular reactor. That means I'll have over 7,000 batch runs per year. Um, and if I have, for example, 20 reactors, that number goes up to about uh, 15,000. So if I want to wade through all that data and find the, the best batch, that's going to be quite a challenge. Um, luckily in TrendMiner, there's a few things you can do to make that process a lot easier. So first thing I'll do is actually, um, in my batches, um, I'm going to look for the active identifier. If my batch is uh, more than 60 minutes active, uh, I know that this was a good batch that actually going to run to completion. Um, if uh, if it's shorter than than uh, 60 minutes than one hour, I know that it had to be ended prematurely, uh, maybe due to some problem with catalyst control. Maybe I had too much cooling in the initial phases, um, effectively killing the reaction. Uh, maybe there was a problem with temperature or pressure control that was uh, um, so I went out of spec and uh, I had to stop because I know if I exceed my uh, specification by maybe three standard deviations, I have to stop that batch because it's going to be uh, of bad quality. Okay, so that's the first identifier that I look for, 60 minutes. Um, and you see indeed in the period that I have active uh, the last, uh, it's about half a year, I get around 3,000 batches, 3,000 search results. Now, what do I want to do? Uh, for me, a good batch is one that has sufficient yield, okay? Um, if it has more than, let's say, 48 uh, ppms, for me, that's a good batch. That's a sufficient yield to get uh, a good profit from that particular batch. Um, and the second uh, qualifier or the second condition is that it needs to be as short as possible because, of course, a batch that takes only one hour is better than a batch that takes two hours, obviously. So that are the two things I want to do. So first of all, let me create the calculation on top of all my search results that says my concentration, so for, uh, for each of those batches, I want to find the maximum concentration reached for each of those batches. Uh, I can give it a name, doesn't really matter. Uh, in my case, it's expressed in parts per million. That's what I'm looking for. Um, and when I press calculate, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, aggregate all of those search results in the background, calculate what is now the maximum concentration reached for all of them. And the nice thing is now I can also sort based on that calculation. Okay, and when I do so, you see that TrendMiner puts all of my batches in, uh, in, in buckets. And my worst batch or the lowest quality is between 38 and 39 ppms, while the best one actually reaches more than 51 ppm. So there's quite a big spread, quite a big, uh, quite a big range of possible outcomes. And I said earlier that I want to um, include all the batches that reach at least 48 ppm. So what I do is inside of the search results, I keep all the ones higher than 48 ppm and I filter out all of the other ones. So you see uh, visually a filter, um, uh, it turns gray, whatever is excluded by that filter. So very nice visually. And you see that of the six batches that I had uh, in, my, in my home screen or my, my start screen, only one actually reaches that plateau, reaches that uh, minimum of 48 ppms. Now I'll repeat my search and everything that is excluded by the filter will not be, uh, will not be looked at and I'll get the same about 150 search results um, that, that I was looking for. There we go. And now I actually, so all of those search results have sufficient quality. Actually now I want to sort on duration and you see when I go to, um, near the bottom, I find actually my shortest batch that reaches my qualifier of at least 48 ppm. And what I can do is I can, um, well, I could select one, but well, that's not, uh, I, do, I do not want to limit myself to one single source of truth because maybe there was some coincidence involved in this particular batch. Uh, no, let's say I want to include about 10 of those batches. So let me just 
to like 10 of them. There we go. This is what I want to keep as, a, as a input into my fingerprint. Um, once again, similar to what I did before, is I can create a fingerprint from these search results. You see, once again, it's going to uh, visualize my profile that I'm looking for. And already I can uh, get some insights just from looking at this. Um, I notice that, for example, for the green lines, for the temperatures, um, well, there is a little bit of toler tolerance. Um, um, as you can see in the middle phase, there's a little bit of tolerance for uh, the absolute level of temperature. While when I look at my level, the pink line, actually that profile is quite narrow. It's quite, uh, um, let's say the tolerance is quite low. Um, and when I think about it as, as a process engineer, maybe this doesn't surprise me because I know a level, um, it's linked to the total pressure in my batch or in my reactor that can be linked to partial pressures of my, uh, my reactants. And by uh, the principle of Le Chatelier-Brown, I know that this will actually hold back my reactor uh, or my reaction, for example. So this is something that I want to monitor very closely. Um, so once again, I'll create this fingerprint. I will give it a uh, webinar uh, batch fingerprint as a name. And when I save it, I can now again use this for uh, overlaying it over my, uh, um, over my process as it's going on. Uh, but before I do that, actually, let me go to live mode and let me clean up the layers that I have active so I have a clean slate to start from. I'll also disable my filter just so we can start from blank slate. And when I go to live mode with the play button, you see that, well, my current batch, um, it is now, well, more or less halfway through. So we're on the plateau of the, of the temperature. Um, as it is going on, this batch, I would like to, uh, to see how does it visually compare to my fingerprint? So what I'll do is I'll actually um, overlay my fingerprint on the current view. And let me just align them very quickly for you. So uh, I can have all this information on my screen. There we go. So you see now indeed that uh, as my batch is going on, and uh, maybe I can zoom a little bit, um, you notice that, well, my current batch, um, currently, well, temperature is, is in, the, in, the good, uh, in the good region, but my concentration, you see, is it's starting to lag behind a little bit. You notice I'm a little bit on the low side of my, uh, of my envelope, the low side of my golden batch profile. So probably this is something I want to uh, keep a closer eye on. But what would be actually a lot nicer still is to have a prediction of what is now most likely to happen with my batch in the near future. How does my profile, how is it going to look like uh, as my batch is going on? So when I turn on the predictive mode, what Trendminer will do now is actually do something very similar to uh, the similarity search that we looked at uh, earlier. It's going to look in the background for similar profiles. It's going to look for uh, the most similar um, batch profiles uh, as they are going on and as new data is coming in, it's going to keep updating this, uh, this prediction. And indeed, as you see, um, for my concentration, and I noticed it was still on absolute scale, let me put it on auto scale to have the full, uh, to have the full view. For the three most similar batches, you see here, number of batches, I have selected three. For the three most similar batches, um, actually the concentration is going to be very low. So this is probably a point in time where me as a process expert together with my operators, uh, I want to make a decision like uh, what do we need to do? Um, what is the, well, what action should we take? Um, probably in this case, as my level is still also pretty good, there's probably an outside influence that we want to look at. Uh, there's some further analysis that we want to do. Um, so we can take an action, but at least we have the objective, the objective information right in front of our nose here that it's based on history without any modeling exercise. It's most likely that this is going to wind up as a bad batch. So uh, it's something that I want to uh, that I want to look at. And as you can see, also the three predictions they are very close to each other, and my batch is about halfway through. So I can say with good confidence that uh, that this batch is going to be uh, going to be uh, well, let's say troublesome. Um, well, for the demo's sake, uh, or for the webinar's sake, this is where I will conclude. But if I were a process engineer at this point, I would probably do a similarity search and try to find out 
uh, if I can learn something from those pre from those uh, previous phases, um, if I can, uh, if some action was taken, some annotation was created by uh, this was the problem, this was what I need to uh, investigate, or I can use the influence factors to find out what was going on. Uh, so I can also make an informed decision on what we are going to uh, or what action we uh, we would have to take. All right. So that concludes uh, our, uh, our final example. So what we did was we selected the 10 best batches for our specific criteria. So for me, it was having a yield or having a, a product um, concentration higher than 48 ppms uh, as short as possible. That for me was just the, the best batch. On top of that, create um, a fingerprint. And then we went to actually uh, compare visually, um, turn on the predictive mode and see what is now most likely to happen uh, and in this case, we were actually running into problems, so it would be a good case to actually uh, continue the analysis again to find out what is now the root cause, um, what do we need to do um, to take corrective action, and probably my operators or me as a subject matter expert, I would know what to do, I would know what action to take. Um, and as a consequence, it's now possible to, to actually achieve, with on a lot more consistent basis, um, this golden batch profile. 